Hey, how's it going, guys? Hi, Terry. How are you? Oh my gosh, it's fantastic to see you. You too. It's been too long. It has been too long. I was um, thinking about it, and it's been um, since cabinectomy at uh, Goss Michael in 2014. Yeah, it's crazy. I can't believe that was wow. going well five and, yeah. and a half years ago. Yes, yeah. yes, and you still look just as young and happy as ever. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, it's too kind. You too. You look amazing. Can I? Can yeah. I take a second? I want to introduce you to. Oh yes, I'm and sorry. And then, well, well, we have right. we have some folks still filtering in, which is great. So I, I just cool. want to. We'll start off by introducing um, Neil and Terry to the group, and then um, just a one or two housekeeping items quickly for everyone who's joined us. Um, so Neil is a London-based artist. He's shown with Anat Evgi for, I think, Neil, what was your first solo show in 2014 with Anat? 15, I think. 2015. 15. Yeah. And, um, and most recently had a solo show in 2017, but we also did a solo booth in Athens last summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and Neil received his MA from the Royal College of Art in London. Um, and he's gonna show us around his studio today. And Terry yeah. is the founder and publisher and editor-in-chief of Patron Magazine, based in Dallas, dedicated to the visual and performing arts in North Texas. She serves as the publisher and editor-in-chief of the Dallas Arts District Guide, covering every art organization in the largest contiguous arts district in the United States. In addition to Patron, she has launched over a dozen other publications for Texas. She is passionate about art, all art disciplines, loves the Dallas Art Fair, which is the reason we're all here today, and has collected art over the past three decades. So we're happy to have um, you two with us today. And um, welcome to everyone who's joined the chat. Um, if you have questions during the visit, put them in the chat and then I'll bring them up either throughout or we can kind of save things towards the end and we can jump back to different topics that have been covered. Um, so yeah, great to have everyone. Thank you, Thanks, Baron. Baron. It, it's that was just, lovely. It's, it's so good to see Neil. It was such a fun time in Dallas and you know, you were among one of the last shows at that location which was very mm. very large in my in the background here i have my piece nice next to me and and awesome. i love it i just oh, love good. it and it's always um, fun to see the work and uh it is yeah i know we kept you very busy in dallas you you oversold <laughs> that show yeah and um dallas really embraced you and that was right on the heels of winning the catlin art prize yeah that's right yeah so um, those those um how did those two events really influence your practice i mean from winning that prize to having a solo show at a you know a, a much lauded um brit art um place right in the u.s yeah well it was it was kind of very crazy because um that show at the goss michael foundation was my first solo show so for it to be in you know such a big institution in dallas it was um overwhelming uh and also you know just completely amazing to have that platform um and uh from that you know i was in talks with the gallery in la um and then it sort of that developed into a relationship with anna ebke gallery and uh so you know i went on a whole sort of adventure i guess through um yeah showing in dallas and then obviously um los angeles and um eventually i was living there for a, you know, just over a year, uh, a couple of years ago. Oh, you ago. were living so in LA? Yeah, I spent a sort of a, an okay. extended adventure, you could say. Oh, um, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know you had moved there. Well, I mean, I did for a while. I'm back for, in London now. For a while. Now. Yeah, it was like, yeah, no. I always wanted to 
spend some time in it. I was, you know, I always looked at America with sort of very nostalgic or, you know, kind of romantic kind of lens growing up. So um, I just really wanted to take the opportunity when I could uh, with, you know, working with the gallery out there to actually just embrace that culture a bit more. And, you know, the work is kind of, it makes sense for the work, you know, it's kind oh, of- Oh, it sure does. A mid, you know, especially, well, Dallas and, you know, middle America and all these sort of beautiful landscapes and scenery that you get all the cross, you know, yeah. the, such a vast country. Uh, I, I just, yeah, really, it was just really amazing to sort of be able to explore it a little bit more, you know. Um, still, obviously, it's so huge it's impossible to, you need a whole lifetime, you know, I mean, I don't think most people have been to, you know, most of the states who are from America, so it's... I um, know, that's what my husband always It's a big said. challenge. His yeah. uh, father was a school teacher, and on summers, they road tripped everywhere, and oh, he right. knows more about the U.S. than probably anyone, because he's been to every part of it. Yeah. But um, I've always been attracted to Europe and the UK, of course. And, um, sure, yeah. you know, um, I always want to go abroad. And he's like, there's so much to see here. <laughs> but, um, and your, your work really shows that. I saw that you have something from the Tetons in this body mm. of work. But I kind of wanted to start at the beginning. You've always been lured by the hypnotic Bob Ross since you were yeah. a young child. I read about you uh, <laughs> pretending you were sick so you could watch Joy of Painting. <laughs> That's just fantastic. Yeah. And um, you mm. still return um, to his how-to books to pluck your imagery from? Um. Yes, and yeah, sometimes it's um it's a it's it's a hard one to sort of pin down really because um it's they're obviously still a, a starting point for my practice, but um as as the work progresses, uh they I've taken the the sort of the guides and the sort of the you know the techniques that Bob Ross teaches and then applying them to uh, mostly my own um, landscapes, imagined landscapes, and um, sometimes, you know, landscapes that I've visited, uh, as Barrett said, um, uh, in uh, Greece, was in Greece last summer, so um, a lot of the landscape I used uh, during that visit. Um, and so, you know, I actually still do dip into the, I've got a, a, a all the Bob Ross books that he produced on every episode of The Joy of Painting. Um, so I think he made over 400 paintings um, during his lifetime. Wow. Yeah, which is pretty crazy. Uh, because he made, I think, I believe it was three or four paintings for each episode, um, but all identical, which I, was kind of interesting, you know, as a side note, because it was already dealing with repetition when you think about, he was copying his own work off camera. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, so I still dip into the books and then pick out little bits of information that, uh, you know, a mountaintop or, you know, some sort of transition that they're, they're a lot, they're like jigsaw puzzles, for, you know, for me. So I'm sort of inventing my own and also in between the two. So, um, quite a, <laughs> it's, I could kind of, you know, go, go, yeah, it's kind of a, a long journey as to sort of how I use Bob Ross at the moment, really, I guess. <laughs> well, now both of you um, make it appear deceptively simple, which I know your paintings are not. So um, can you take us through your process a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it's, um, well, it is deceptively, yeah. I mean, it took a while when I first tried to paint, like my first Bob Ross, I was in art school. I had watched it growing up, but then I, it was only when I was in art school that I decided, you know, I was, I was in my shed and I thought I wanted to a break from the paintings that I was trying to make, which was sort of like photo realism and just having like struggling a lot to, you know, uh, make a painting that was, had a sort of a realistic landscape basically. So, just as a bit of relief, um, I was painting along to Bob Ross 
and that it was really tricky you know it's as it's i don't know if it's sort of put, comes up in pop culture um a lot like people painting lines of bob ross and it just looking like a mess and obviously that's always what your first bob ross looks like my first bob ross was a nightmare <laughs> so um uh yeah it took a i for me i was surprised it's surprising that it's hard because he makes it look so easy you think okay you know let's yeah. Happy Let's just little trees. bash it out, yeah, and then it just turns into a big like pile of mud, um, <laughs> you know, like a brown monochrome, I think. So, um, so it took a few attempts, and then it does become you do sort of it's it's a style of painting that you can like you know understand, and then all those ways of painting you can apply then you know in in your own way, which is the beauty of you know what bob ross was all about i think you know it's it's you don't have to it's just magical to watch him i think but um if you do have the time it's it's very rewarding to paint along and get somewhere with it uh yeah so that's 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 how i i, I sort of learned how to paint a good bob ross basically and then i left it, and then it didn't go anywhere for a few years because it was just something that um you know, something on the side that I enjoyed doing. And then it was like a period of several years until that became a part of my practice, you know. And you're, you're taking really traditional painting and making it abstract with the repetition. Um, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I guess so like I said I was sort of I'd I was sitting on this kind of hobby I guess you know just painting to Bob Ross and then in college I was at the Royal College in London doing my master's degree in painting and a lot of the conversation was around sort of abstraction and formalism and um, I had been looking for a way to weave this sort of language of craft into the conversation that I was a part of there you know like um, process and all this sort of ideas of painting that I was really interested in and so there was just this one little uh, piece that uh, I repeated a mountain over and over again and that was the starting point for what became like a, a much larger body of work that you know that um, that I'm sort of pursuing still so um, it, it, it kind of just happened you know kind of randomly but then it just took on its own life, I guess. And it became interesting to me then to think, okay, you know, you take the horizon away from a landscape. And that's really like a point in the, in a painting, in a landscape painting where you're, you know, where your, your eyes disappear into. And it's this sort of, it's, you know, the, the sublime of, of, the, of the, you know, the nature. And so I was sort of thinking about that in, in terms of contemporary painting and then taking away that horizon really did something that I was, you know, that I didn't expect to happen. So I was putting the landscapes on top of each other and then there was this kind of strange juxtaposition, I guess, between this romance and then this kind of hard line sort of abstraction. And then it sort of started from there. And so it makes any sense. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. Can you like position yourself in front front of one of your paintings? Yeah, sure. Do you want me to? Take... Um, yeah, here's yes, my Yes, take studio. us around the studio. We'd yeah, love to see your studio. It's very bright um, in the evening. The sun comes glaring through the window, so I've got a bit of this blackout thing here. Um, but here's a piece that I'm working on at the moment. Oh. So um you know the piece you just posted on uh the patron magazine thing so yeah. it's um I, I just started doing these sort of larger they're sort of like cropped versions of the paintings that i you know that i've been making so um this would be like a an example i guess so it's sort of taking this kind of approach and then blowing it up uh so they're much larger you can see like here's my hand so it's quite a it's taking oh yes it is a very large painting. yeah and this is a really large painting too so well compared to 
some of the, some of the sort of the size of the landscapes that I make. And I love the detail from like mine is fairly small. I think it's 20 by 16, but right. the detail is there from small to your large scale. How, what, what size are your larger canvases? Would you say? Uh, I mean, um, I'm terrible with, the uh, inches, but I oh, I know. The if, uh, if I am with this one is, do you know what? I think this is around sixty-five inches or something like. It's two hundred okay. centimeters tall. Okay. So it's as tall as me. So um, oh. it's about six foot. Wow. Okay. Yeah. This. This is uh, yeah. This Love is a that. piece. Oh, that's fantastic. That, I've this is based on the Silk seen. Road. I've not really seen animals in your work before. Yeah, this is this is one I've just been working on um, with a, a fashion. Well, it's um, the it's I've been working with the fashion label in Istanbul called Les Benjamins. Oh, um, so it's going to be part of a collaboration um, on uh, some cloth a clothing line. Oh, um, on the the theme is um yeah the uh the silk road so that sort of the camels taking all the, the, the wares camels. from east to west thanks yeah i've had a lot of really enjoyed making this sort of there's uh smaller pieces on the same sort of um the same uh motif as well so um yeah i've really enjoyed it it's uh it's supposed to happen in paris in june but i think obviously that's going to be postponed and uh yeah, a couple of projects uh, linked to that, uh, sort of on the back burner, I guess. Now I've noticed, um, you've always used natural colors, but I remember um, a very large scale, a few large scale canvases at Goss Michael that were rainbow hued. Have you, yeah. your color theory changed since then? I mean, I do see some, some pinks in your work, um, but they almost look like a sunset. Yeah, uh, yeah, they, that was the, the, those sort of fade, um, those colors are, I think like 2016 and that sort of, for like a year or so, I was really interested in sort of pushing the boundaries of like realism as far as color goes and then there's these very acidic sort of color palette that I was um, exploring. Um, so yeah, that was, it's particular to that time in my mind, you know, um, I think they have become a lot earthier. Um, there's, I still kind of slightly unrealistic uh, colors, I think, you know, as far as um, the palette goes. Um, and I'm always trying to find new ways to combine. So this one is sort of, this one's just a little sketch, but um, oh. you know, it's kind of uh, yes. based a lot more on, um, you know, the Hudson River School, and um, I'm looking to different different influences in the in the paintings. So it's a lot more traditional, um, yeah, like I say, like Hudson River School palette, which is still completely magical, you know. Yes. Um, I've been looking at this guy quite a lot, Friedrich Church. Mm -hmm. Don't know if you're familiar with his work, but it's kind of oh yes, yeah, very um, uh, you know, very exaggerated in a way. Yes. You know, I see them like very much in the tradition of you know, Bob Ross would have been channeling that kind of approach to painting with his own work. Mm -hmm. So it's it seems like a natural sort of transition to sort of I can go between those two landscapes, those two sort of worlds, and they sort of seem to come from the same place, you know, very romantic and um, based on a lot of the beautiful American kind of pastoral uh, plains and, you know, plateaus. <laughs> well, and also installation is a really important part of your solo shows like I mm. um the material I, I received from Anat um it looks like you have a bench and is that fat the fat are you producing the fabric or is that that's not painted correct no yeah correct that's um 
Oh yeah, this is my sofa. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's printed. Um, I just use a company in London, and um, it's very crafty. They're called Bags of Love, I think, and they use you can use a website to upload images, and then you can sort of you can have fabric printed off. So with the furniture, I tend to have like a a couple of rolls of fabric made and then um there's an upholsterer that i'm in touch with in london and they can do the sofa do the sofas for me so it's those projects are really fun it's kind of based completely um they're all completely specific to what's going on at that very moment so you know that's what's it's nice to think about how to tackle a different problem you know away from the paintings and it's 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 quite scary but you know it, it always seems to work out one way or another yes i think i love you know like i said the cabin at goss michael really connected the whole exhibition and you also hand paint the walls correct or yeah. are you now using wallpaper uh well I've, wall I've done both yeah, I've done okay. both, but um, but the murals are, are definitely like a fun part, and I think that's where these, you know, these larger pieces, not like the larger sort of crops of the paintings, I've really learned a lot from the murals that are f sort of feeding into these paintings. So they're acrylic based, sort of, you know, and on a large gallery wall, and um, yeah, I, I, I would. I've sort of a couple of times I've made like a very large landscape and then hung like a sort of a piece over the top of it just to sort of you know the work is dealing a lot with scale so it for me it's interesting to see that like how that shift happens between the you know the, the micro and the macro um, so I think with these pieces that I'm working on now that are sort of zoomed in larger pieces could be interesting on a the sort of flip side of that where the wallpaper would be the small landscapes so it's sort of reversed um just you know always thinking about like that push and pull with, yes. with scale um and the, the theater of it is you know it's always something i'm thinking about do you want to show us anything else um in your studio uh yeah, I can give you a lot of the work is in LA at the moment, but this is what I've been working on for the past little Ooh. bit. This is just a little, this is called pickle party. It's just these sort of uh, cacti that are made of pickles, which was just this um, for this magazine. Uh, it's just a fun little project um, that someone emailed me about to make something to do with pickles. And these are just little sketches basically that um, I often work on that scale. Um, and then they feed into the larger works. So this one, this is, this painting is based on, um, so this is one where I've taken a little bit of Bob Ross and then a little bit of my own world. This painting is based on a park that I walk my dog in every day. So there's this beautiful bridge and I always pass it and, and it's like, there's so much wildlife there. And um, this, so this piece came from that. And then obviously there's no mountain in London, but, uh, it sort of became like that sort of landscape on the canvas um that was this was the small sketch that it sort yes, of came from yes i see that and that's almost a full on landscape isn't it yeah exactly that exactly yeah i don't usually finish them you know but this one i just thought it was it needed you know it was so close i wanted to just put some sky in and have it like a little landscape so Neil, um, you work with the sketches, you kind of work out the individual elements before figuring out how they might repeat. Is that? Sort yeah, of exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. That's, that's how they work. Uh, I'll, I'll start on a small scale and I don't know really usually what I'm going to do. And then I'll just have a palette or something in mind and then get going. And then, take it from there really and um you know it might not be anything it might not be successful or then it might i might it might have the hint of a color or something you know or just anything i'm just looking for like something to start me off like mm. um because really they don't really they're not really landscapes at that point they're just i'm just thinking about putting something down and then hopefully it'll turn into something so that can take some time but uh or you know like oftentimes i'll also be 
doing digital sketches on Photoshop. So these are, this is like um, a plan for the painting basically, right? Let me show you. It's a really rough sort of um, collage. So this mountain is plopped on top of a different mountain, but um, it's, uh, it's like a beginning guide for the paintings. Like you can see like, it's kind of like a, a, a started here. So this is like a, a Friedrich Church painting. And then this is a, a painting that, this is a painting that I already made of a free mm -hmm. church painting that I then sort of chopped up and printed out. And then I put this, this is a Bob Ross mountain. And then I put that on top of this landscape. So it's all sort of m m meshed up together in a way. And then I start on this canvas, but then that will change too. You know, when I get to here, I'm thinking like I might put some waterfalls in or it depends what it wants, you know, it's sort of, you get to a point in the painting and then you think, oh, there's something not, there's something that needs to change or, so that's what's nice about it. You know, you set a little route for yourself and then halfway along the way you get, you see something, you think, oh, what's that? I want to follow that. Yeah. And then, you know, by the time you finish the painting, this, it's quite different oftentimes from what you had in mind at the beginning and that's the fun of it you know it's yeah um, th this ties in with a question we've just gotten from the group that from john lange given the complexity and repetition that make up your paintings compositions i'm sure there's a lot of painting and thought that goes into them i'm curious how much of bob's mantra of happy little accidents work their right. way into your process and final product which is kind of what you're talking about right now that's a good yeah that's it that's that's a good uh, good question. Um, yeah, they do. They sometimes they are literally happy. They like, as Bob Ross makes a happy accident, which we can talk <laughs> a little bit about because that's something that he. Uh, I'm sure he does have happy accidents, but when he says he has a happy accident, oftentimes it's planned. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like I said, you know, you get halfway through a painting, and then I think, oh, you know, I'll take a picture of it the painting and then uh, airdrop it to myself and put it into Photoshop and pluck a different tree down there. And to me, that's like a happy accident or something. You know, I think like it's always, it's like a Tamagotchi. It just needs feeding or something. You're just <laughs> thinking about, you know, keeping it well and like watering it and helping it grow. So um, yeah, there's, that's, that is a good, that's a good question. Uh, the happy accidents I tend not to think about because um you know i'm sort of trying i i'm quite a, I, I i guess i'm still trying to embrace exactly what bob ross is all about and just being completely stress-free but unfortunately it's not quite that um <laughs> that that uh you know pleasant all the time <laughs> um you talked about the wall murals being acrylic i know all the final paintings are oil right but uh, will, yeah, will you show it? Will you show everyone the little watercolor that? Oh yeah, have? and yeah, can you talk about if you? Is this just totally new or? Yeah, this is a little watercolor that. Um, again, it's like uh, thanks. It's just a little sketch, I guess. You know, um, I I've started to do them. Um, I've only just really recently started to make a few little watercolors to, there for a way to get down an idea quickly, you know, like, um, cause the oil paintings can take quite so much longer. Um, sure. when I'm planning a painting, like we were just talking about, um, I found that it's really helpful to sort of lay down some watercolor and then that can become something much quicker. And then I can use that energy that, you know, that you can get from a, uh, a watercolor and transfer it onto canvas, uh, and know kind of a little bit more what it's going to be. So, will, will um, you show us the watercolor? Like, just kind of pause on it for a second, so that oh yeah, of there's a lot of detail there. Yes. Yeah. So we can take it all in. Yeah, it's uh, it's just a. I mean, this, <laughs> you know, it it became quite. Again, I think I've just got kind of a. I tend to get, um, quite, uh lost in stuff so I, this was not actually that quick in the end <laughs> you know this i thought okay i'll just do something to get get myself going and then 
you know, two days later, I'm working on this watercolor. But um, it's quite detailed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It the, the I you know my background before I was doing Bob Ross was um, like I said, it was these sort of very photorealistic paintings and um, what amongst painters there's people that you sort of uh, might coin zero zero brush people which are like a zero zero brush is like this one of the smallest brushes that you can use and um, at college I was a zero zero brush I was part of the zero zero brush club which is <laughs> oh that's um, that's yeah it's just people cool. that spend too long <laughs> doing tiny <laughs> things um, and I was I was part of that so and there's always a little bit of that me in me, you know. I don't know what it is, but um, just that slightly um, labor-intensive uh, process seems to attract me. I think. I'll well, that kind of speaks to this very hypnotic and meditative quality to your work, and I would imagine that you just get into your zone when you're really repeating a mountain or a cabin or yeah yeah exactly that's that's exactly it um i do find it extremely meditative um because another thing to mention i guess about the paintings um is that um each one is just ever so slightly unique you know each each peak and trough and you know whatever it's all got whatever difference it is it's 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 arbitrary really, but that's the point, I think, you know, <laughs> I like the painting is such a, I don't know, it's like, it's so romantic, isn't it, painting? And romance itself is, uh, it's just got this kind of uh, nostalgic kind of history to it. And so it, finding a place for it in, in you know, modern society is, is kind of, uh, I've, I've sort of strange really it's it's it occupies a very like it doesn't have a real purpose or whatever like you know it's it's sort of there's something so stupid about painting that's why how I think about it and I, that's what I try to embrace so repeating the mountains is kind of you know it's it sort of goes against like any logic uh that you know that would like a computer could have or anything like that so um it sort of stems a little bit out of that sort of craft you know the idea of craft which uh is its history it couldn't be further away from digital culture you know uh, however for me i i find myself in between those two worlds um and it and i think the paintings represent uh how I've always felt in that way. Like growing up, my dad was a big craft arts, like painting like uh, tigers and all these fantasy landscapes and stuff. So um, I've always kind of had that element to, to my world, I guess. Uh, so yeah, but then obviously being a part of the generation that I am growing up with the internet and everything like that, uh, you, that this just bridges that gap for me where you have you know painting coming out of the digital age and then um and then this bob ross sort of repeated world is like my sort of representation i guess of that where do you see your practice going do you see yourself incorporating more animals or do you see yourself moving, um, shifting to, you know, more of this zero zero brush uh, <laughs> genre? Well, or? yeah, I mean, definitely. I, I think, uh, you know, I don't. It's it's kind of a mystery to me too. But I mean, I think the animals are really interesting. I really, I really want to take that a bit further because when I make a painting I'm thinking a little bit always about like you know if it's these kind of big dark brooding mountains and stuff and I'm thinking about like the wolves and the different creatures that live in that world yeah. so um so you know that's a big part of it for me for sure like uh, and then yeah I, I, I 
both really in answer to your sort of second part of the question i think um expanding the landscapes is it's not quicker but it's a little bit different it's a little bit more direct um and i'm what i want to sort of venture into next i guess is um mixing the two worlds together so you know i've got these sort of repetitive right repetitive smaller landscapes and i'm just getting going on these bigger ones which are going to scale up so it will just be a really big mountain and then i want to um paint into that smaller landscapes so you've got this whole journey through scale on one painting um so i'm really excited to sort of go down that road and see where that goes uh it is exciting yeah, it, yeah, you know, in my mind, it's kind of like, you know, I could make landscapes a mountain up of smaller landscapes and it could become, you know, this push and pull of representation and, you know, the the smaller things that are going to just become more abstract. And I think there's a lot of room to sort of play in that, you know, in that world. And how did, um, you said it was a clothing company, how did they find you? Yeah, uh, he just shot me a message on Instagram. Um, wow. And he has a friend called Sinan, who's a collector, also based in Istanbul, I believe. Um, and so, yeah, they got in touch and we just started the conversation from there a few months ago. Um, so, well, I hope uh, we have a virtual yeah. opening at the very least, and we'd be... We'd love to share that on Patreon. Yeah, Patreon yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. I see um, some collectors right in front of me of your work. Um, they have a great one of your pieces right behind them. All so right. I know you have a fan club out there. Uh, I don't know if you want me to say your name or not, but they've got a beautiful example they're sitting right in front of. Oh, right. I'm not seeing any cameras uh, on my phone. Oh, no. Did we lose Neil? There he is. Harry? Oh, where did he go? He's here, but I can't hear him anymore. Well, somehow oh, there you, he is. You, your your mic got muted. Oh yeah, I can there see Ruth are. and Bill down there. Hey guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'll try not to swipe. I swiped and then it turned off. So sorry about that. I don't know okay, why. I was afraid to do that because I wanted to see who else was on the call. But you know, I'm a Zoom neophyte and uh, <laughs> I'm like afraid to touch anything. But um, <laughs> I am now too. Yeah. Uh. Are, Barrett, are you able to show um, any of the work from the fair that's available? Well, Neil has two pieces. Neil, go stand in front of the, the, the one that Terry posted today and you could hold it okay, there, yeah. you know, longer. And then, yeah. As, as everyone knows, there's a lot of challenges with shipping work right now. Mm. <laughs> yes, we have to be patient. Yes, we do. Yeah. And there's the second one that's there's this piece over here do you yeah, want to talk that. about like neil maybe the the way the transitions are different with these sort more closer crops yeah sure it's um because like it's, there's like a tree line you know there's a tree line at the base of the sort of glacial mountain that i don't necessarily think would show up in the smaller no like, yeah well, that's what's fun about these is, you, you know, they do allow more, you know, more detail, I guess, and a little bit more, um, yeah, a little bit more sort of things going on in between the, what would, what would be uh, a smaller sort of transition. So, uh, like with this piece, I was really able to, like, get with a small brush and sort of paint the water, like, you know, like the little bits going over the rocks, whereas it's, so it's become a lot more about the figurative element of the painting with these pieces. Um, mm. Whereas obviously with the, these, these kind of pieces, it's, 
it's still about that, but it's obviously a little bit more to do with the overall picture and it being like based on abstract, like a, an abstract kind of composition. So yeah, these are slightly more, I guess you could say like traditional in a, in a sense, like this is like, a, I've used a small brush to sort of paint these um, palm trees here. Um, whereas like, uh, so it's not, it's not necessarily in line with Bob Ross. It's more like traditional, whereas the smaller paintings would be like a fan brush and you'd take it and it would like, you know, like magically drop like 20 leaves or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah. Now the palm trees um, frequently appear in your work. Yeah, yeah. I can't, they seem to be quite popular. I, like, I'm, I, I'm very attracted to them. I don't know what it is. I paint a lot of palm trees. I had a text earlier before this call um, uh, asking um, on the fabric, do you work with designers like for a custom piece? Um, well, like this. Like an interior designer, let's say they, they had a home, you know, they're wor working for a client that had a second home in Vail and they wanted like, um, you know, a sofa or whatever. Um, have you done that? Um, yeah, uh, not like, yeah, not like here and there. Like, it's quite personal, I guess. If someone wants, gets in touch and it would be a commission, I guess. And I have worked with commissions. Um, so it's a case by case, I guess, you know. Um, yeah, uh, there's been some things that are possible, you know, within the world of, the, the work that I make and then that's fun and we can sort of have quite a, you know a, a good dialogue um yeah that's that that's um something that uh something that I'm open to um and then you know most of the time it's kind of self-directed as far as the exhibit they basically usually based on exhibitions so I would think about the installation and then the the furniture and the objects come from come from just that sort of that idea for that particular show um mm -hmm. but then you know yeah like i say if someone is like got in touch then that's i can you know there's like personal projects i guess you could say sure. that I work on um yeah uh you know i think that because the work really lends itself to that anyway I, you know i've always been i the first mural I made was for my sister in her back garden. So it's, it's all, it's all, it's all comes from that very accessible world that, you know, I think painting that I love about painting. So, um, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's important, I think, to kind of always bring people into the work. Uh, because it's, you know, the world that it comes from is very, you know, it's a very easy, happy place. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Bob Ross in you, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. There's a little bit in there, I think. Neil, how have about you? You, yeah. Sorry, you, you, you've shown us a lot of like inspiration from paint, landscape painting. Have you ever taken inspiration from like your own you know hiking or you know photographs you landscapes you visited if from like more of a photographic point of view yeah 100 percent um the the pieces uh so when i was in greece uh last summer the the body of small body of work that i made there was based on this beautiful viewpoint on i will butcher the name of it but it's called philip Apple hill um, and it's just this gorgeous sort of, um, you, you know, you see the Parthenon and all the sort of the ter like the white buildings just disappearing into the distance. And um, that I was up there taking photographs and then I'd print those off. And that's how I, that's how I painted that sort of body of work. Um, but then, you know, I'm looking at a mountain top on a photograph and thinking, okay, well, you know, <laughs> I've got a two inch brush and then I can sort of use crisscross strokes and then 
your palette knife and you know it becomes like a Bob Ross in Greece. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, How about while you were living in the U.S.? Did you, for example, go to Wyoming and see the not yet? Or? No, I, I, I know I, I, I really need to go to some of these amazing like Montana and places because I've yeah, yeah, I, I did. I mean, California is just breathtaking. Like oh, it I is. Think, you know, I do, I absolutely love LA, but my one of my favorite parts of being living there was the the rest of California and just going in one day from the beach to the snowy mountains is just something you can't you know fathom. I'm from the Midlands in in England as well, so it's couldn't be further away from you know these sort of they're sublime, you know these huge landscapes that it's just you're so lucky to have um all across the yeah the country um so yeah you're so i that's my next trip i need to go uh <laughs> bill and ruth have a lovely place in upstate new york where they are oh. now um and the landscape there is incredible oh yes. um, yeah um yeah the green a and long time but it is it's beautiful yeah um a so lot yeah in texas but <laughs> yeah well that's it it's such a huge country isn't it it's more of a continent in my mind when you've like it's about the size of europe i think it is <laughs> it is it's amazing um yeah well did we have any other questions from from the the chat just well, Neil, it's been a so great to see you again and i hope that um we will see you very uh, soon yeah. stateside. Yeah, and, that'd be great. And are you, um, are you in Dallas at the moment? I am in Dallas, yes. I have been shelter, sheltering in place. My I have asthma and diabetes, so oh, wow. I've got the double whammy, so my husband won't even let me, you know, do much. I take walks no. through my neighborhood, but I'm very <laughs> ready to get out. Very, very yeah. ready. I bet. Oh, but well, you've got to stay safe. Too. Yeah, that sounds like uh, that's that sounds like you need to be indoors for <laughs> with the asthma. Yes, and my 27 year old nephew um, had the virus, and he said oh, he wow. felt like he um, was hit by a Mack truck. He lives in Chicago, and his mm. girlfriend is a uh, nurse. Okay. But they're both recovered, thankfully. But you just oh, never good. know where it's going to strike. So yeah, that's true. It's scary stuff. Um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Barrett, thank for you, arranging Neil this. And Terry. Yeah. Great. Thank you, everyone, for taking part. It's been and it's I been urge a lot of fun. all of you listeners to go onto Dallas Art Fair on, online and go. Um, into a not Ebge's booth. It's really beautiful. There's some great um, work by Neil. Cool. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Thank I've really you, appreciated everyone. you coming over today in my very <laughs> sunny studio. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Take care. bye.